Hi everyone, I have a new preferred scenario on the lower time frame, but in this video I will also show you the high time frame and medium time frame bullish and bearish scenario. So on the high time frame, my more bullish scenario is that this is an ABC that is still not finished as wave C did not hit the common wave C target or the rare wave C target. In this case, I believe we are then in a one, two, three, four, five. So currently sitting in this wave four, which is always longer and sideways, where wave four is not allowed to go below the 0 0.5 Fibonacci taken from the low of two to the high of three so the invalidation sits at around 20.3 k if we do get below this invalidation then there's two options either the high time frame bearish option or the bullish option where this then is a wave one two and eventually three for way more upside a potential trading scenario is that we have the low of the four over here in combination with the 3A2. One could enter around this area. The 3A2 is a common area for the low of a potential wave four. And then enter over here, stop loss with a little bit of leeway and then trading it to the upside at around 30k. If this on the high, high time frame is indeed a WXY, then the minimum target for this X is most commonly the 3A2, which sits at about 29.6k. So that would be a very nice target also because it used to be support in the past couple of years, then turning resistance, which I think would be absolutely brilliant. And that is why there's also a short trade, a potential trading setup here entering around the 3A2 with a little bit of leeway for the stop loss of the maximum target of wave C and then trade it to the downside to much, much lower prices, which then also in the bearish scenario is the case right now, where then this is the high of wave five C and X. So basically the high is already in and we are gonna move to the downside with potentially also a leading diagonal in where we are right now, but I will show you that on the medium and also on the lower time frame. In this scenario, we can expect prices to go below uh, wave B for sure. Any validation is if we take the highs at 25.3K. Now on the medium time frame, I'm looking for the following scenario where we are in a WXY that is at least currently still preferred. So we have a W, X, and then eventually a three wave in the Y. Now what I like about this scenario so far is that if this is indeed wave Y, then the target area for wave Y is between the one and the 1.236 trend-based FIB extension from the high of W to the low of W to the high of X, which has a very, very nice confluence with my yellow target box and the confluence as you see on the right side, a weekly, daily, daily naked point of control and another daily. The invalidation is if price goes below the 1.618, which actually also is the invalidation of a wave four. So that is quite clear. And also if we would move up rapidly, then we have another invalidation, which is taking the high of X. The bearish or a potential trading setup, sorry, is that one could enter at the high of the target box over here in this scenario. Stop loss below the lows over here, which is also the invalidation of a wave four and then trading it to the upside. And then the question is, is this three wave the end of wave four or is this only the beginning? And can we expect another wave up and then another wave down? But that is something we will see once we have the information. Then the bearish scenario on the high time frame in a little bit more detail locally is that this is a one, two, three, four. And we're now looking for five to finish at well right and around the yellow target box basically this is then a one then we're looking for a wave two for eventually a three four five to the downside which will lead to prices of at least 15k but uh, most likely between 10 and 13 as a bare minimum so this is the medium time frame bearish count which i have in more detail in the low time frame count but let's now go through the low time frame scenarios because a couple of things changed uh thanks to the price action of last night now i very clearly stated and i think that is a very important lesson in trading in general that i do not catch knives now first of all i was sleeping so i couldn't even catch the knife but secondly uh, whenever i see price uh, action inside a potential reversal area or following an elliott wave count a potential area of interest i want to see some kind of support and i have a couple of rules for myself that are entry rules entry requirements and i want to tick every box before i even consider entering a trade do not catch knives you will lose a lot more and that is no financial advice but it's based on my experience so educational it will lead to a lot more losses than wins so in this case i'm not even in any position i'm also not yet interested to go in any position i'm patient i'm disciplined i'm waiting for what i want to see and in this case we have a wxy 
scenario that I was looking at, of course, a W, then eventually in this X, I was looking for some sort of an ABC expanded flat, which was a very attractive scenario, and then eventually going down for wave Y. Now, the thing now is, is that if this is wave W, then currently this wave X starts to become very, very, very long, first of all. But my main reason for ditching this scenario as my preferred scenario is that price went below the target area for wave B in an expanded flat. So if this, this then is an A, then we have a B and then we have a C. Now, as you can see, the wave B target areas, the 1.236 and the 1.38, including some other supports. But we basically went through and we closed multiple candles below, even on the one hour and on higher time frames, we closed below this area, which is something I generally don't really like to see. So again, if I don't see any, any support, any proof of more upside to come, I'm simply not interested. So that is also a reason why this expanded flat ID and the X currently is not sitting very nicely with me. Another potential, but that is quite far fetched, is that this is a W uh, or the, yeah, so this is a W and then inside a bigger wave X, we have then a W, X, Y, X, Z type of scenario. And then we get another three waves to the upside, grab the highs over here before then further downside. So basically that means that this then becomes a little bit of a, oops, that's a very, a little bit of a, a channel type of move where this is basically a move outside the channel, but then it would go back in the channel, eventually move to the upside, take the highs and then move down. So basically these higher target areas for now, for me, are not representative anymore. And um, yeah, this is not my preferred scenario anymore. So that being said, let's go to my potential preferred scenario, because in the end, you know, what is preferred and alternative, we just keep, uh, keep track of what is happening with price action and update you as good as I can. So in this scenario, which was uh, actually a scenario that I had in my debunk video, it was the fifth one, which I also said I used to have this scenario on the chart, but I'm not that sure um, anymore. Um, and I didn't do too much analysis and detail on it. But I also mentioned that if there's one scenario that could possibly play out of the debunked ones, then it's this one. And uh, in this scenario, what I have now is that this is a one, two, and then inside the one we have over here, like I, I actually have to go to the 15 or I'm on the 15, but lower. But basically what this is, is that this is then a one, two, three, four, five, finishing this blue one. Then we have wave two, three to the downside impulsively. And then wave four is very long. Um, again, it sits a bit, it's a bit weird that wave two, then it's very, very short. Wave four is very, very long, but with the impulsiveness of wave three, yeah, okay, possible, you know. Then we have a W and I was struggling with this part. So if we actually uh, would go on even lower time frames, so you can do that for yourself, you will see that this over here is a three wave structure, which is super short compared to, of course, a W and a Y. So if this then is a W type of wave, then this can be a connecting wave, which then is a wave X, followed by then another three wave structure over here, another WXY or an ABC. And then you have a W connecting wave Y, which is a three wave structure, which I actually figured out this early morning after I got up because it's you know almost 7 a.m. here. So, in the, so yeah, then that could be then the, uh, the end of wave four. And then I'm looking for downside and uh, Again, it's not too clear, a lot of overlap over here, but currently looking at this potential being a one, two, this can be a potential three, four. Now, the most important is that the low of one and the high of four are not sharing the same price levels because that would usually be an invalidation of an impulse. Uh, so in this scenario, this is still very much correct. And also wave three ended below the 1.618 trend based FIB extension taken from the high of one to the low of one to the high of two, which usually has a minimum target for wave three. Now I can't deny that wave three might still be going on, but this is currently the scenario that I have. And of course I will update you if that changes. So then this is a one, two, three, four. And then currently we're in a wave five where this is then one, two, and then this likely being a three, four, five. The target area, is in white, what you see over here. That's the most common uh, target area for at least the blue wave five. And uh, in this scenario, we are already, of course, inside this target area. So the end of wave five can be very, very near. 
But again, what I don't like is we're at the bottom of my previous target box and we could be denied over here and I have the low on the chart with an S, uh, SFP. So one could think that, hey, this wave five might end by actually taking the low and then moving to the upside. And if anything changes, we still have the yellow target box over here, which has to do with the bearish scenario. Um, this was the potential trade on the low time frame, because again, I'm not interested in this trade as long as we do not see any bullish sign. So you, you guys are the first to know if anything changes. I'm trying to tell you my thoughts, my process, and I think it's very, very, very important in trading, you know. So yeah, not interested in this current scenario. So let me actually remove this from the chart and this one as well. And then we have the bearish scenario where in the bearish, oh wait, yeah, in the bearish scenario, we then have a ending or a leading diagonal, one, two, three, then four, and the four is valid in this scenario. And then eventually moving down for wave five. And here you can see that most commonly, this area is hit between 21.4 and 21K. Uh, invalidation is below the yellow target box. And basically the 886 is a more rare target. That's why it's orange. So basically this area over here is a target area, which then has confluence, of course, with the yellow target box. So that can still be quite interesting. So yeah, this is what I uh, wanted to say. This is uh, the scenarios that I'm currently looking at. And um, yeah, I will keep an eye on what is happening on the lower time frames. I currently don't have a trading setup in this scenario because I want to wait for more price action and see what it does over the uh, upcoming hours. So yeah, if you like this video, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested. I do updates multiple times a day. And um, yeah, I hope you have a great day. See you at 1 p.m. for another Bitcoin update. 1 p.m. Central East European time that is. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.